If you've been watching lately, you know that Boeing has problems that go beyond anything on this planet, quite literally. While its CEO was answering tough questions on Capitol Hill yesterday, its engineers were grappling with issues dealing with their Starliner spacecraft. Since they launched on June 5th in its first crewed test flight, astronauts have navigated several issues, including malfunctioning thrusters and helium leaks, and it's turned their week-long mission into a three-week stay on the International Space Station. Retired NASA astronaut Leroy Chow joins us now. Leroy, help us understand these problems and, and how much of a concern this is. Well, you're right. As you pointed out, Boeing has had a lot of problems, uh, not only on the commercial airplane side, but also on the space side. Uh, Starliner way behind the original schedule, a lot of development problems. Finally got off the ground, Butch and Sonny are aboard the station, but not before encountering several minor difficulties, helium leaks, thruster failures. Uh, you know, these are kind of medium to light problems because it doesn't really threaten the mission at this point. It's just a little bit concerning that uh, we're having these, you know, numerous small glitches. But the bottom line is the helium leaks are about, you know, pretty small. Uh, NASA said it was, says they can tolerate about 100 times what's currently leaking. Had five thrusters fail on the way to the station. Four of them have been reactivated. One remains disabled. Uh, shouldn't keep them from coming home safely. Uh, NASA and Boeing just being extra conservative, don't want to be complacent, want to go through everything. And so just being a little bit extra cautious, that's why the mission is being extended. So the, as it is, the ISS is, is kind of uh, a crammed space, right? So I, I'm wondering what kind of contingencies are made for this kind of situation where you have astronauts essentially stuck for two more weeks than originally planned. Right. So NASA, of course, what we do at NASA is we make uh, contingency plans. We plan for redundancies, backups. And so you can bet that the folks at NASA have been looking at, well, in the very worst case that we decide that Starliner cannot come back with Butch and Sonny, what can we do? Well, of course, Butch and Sonny can save haven at the ISS for, you know, well, basically a number of months at least. And so uh, that would be time to get a replacement spacecraft up probably a, a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. They, NASA would have to rejumble the uh, traffic model, but certainly a, a SpaceX uh, Dragon could be brought up to bring Butch and Sonny home. So in the very worst case, that would be what would happen. But, uh, you know, as I said, the problems the Starliner is experiencing are relatively minor. So I fully expect that on the 26th, per the plan, current plan, uh, Butch and Sonny will make it back safely in the Starliner. Yeah, we're, we're hoping for that. Leroy, I want to turn to the Voyager 1 spacecraft because this is really impressive. It started sending back data from truly uncharted territory. It, it was sidelined by a glitch some seven months ago, but now through some creative programming, uh, NASA is able to gather data from it. What are scientists learning from the Voyager that's out there billions of miles away? Well, you're right. This is pretty uh, amazing. Voyager now around 15 billion miles away from the Earth. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, or 50 million. Sorry, but it's <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty incredible. This spacecraft was launched 47 million or I'm sorry, 47 years ago, and uh, <laughs> here it's still sending back data, and it's made it to the heliopause, uh, which is you know the uh, extent of the uh, influence from our sun. And so it's sending back data from a place that no probe has ever been. And this is uh, basically beyond the reach of our solar system, you know, ventured outside, first uh, man-made object to do so. And so it's sending back data on its environment, on, you know, what's going on out there, pretty much in deep galactic space. Uh, really, really impressive. Yeah, whether billions or millions, it's still really impressive. I mean, five decades nearly that this thing has been out there. Leroy Chow? Always great to chat. Uh, good, to, good to be with you always, Boris. Thanks. Thanks. Joining me now to discuss Keith Cowing, editor of NASAWatch.com. Keith, it is great to, to see you. Thanks for being here this morning. Um, explain to uh, viewers what happened here. Well, um, to rewind back why we have a commercial spacecraft, we lost the shuttle. We had to rely on the Russians. 
not a good idea. Let's go commercial. Two companies bid. SpaceX did its thing. Boeing took longer, spent an extra billion dollars. They've had problems with their spacecraft. First mission, a mess. Second one, better. Third one, okay. But the thrusters, the things that steer the spacecraft, weren't working right. So they got in the work right, they docked with the station. Now they're trying to figure out, are we, can we come back safely? That's mm. sort of where we are right now. That's why they keep saying, uh, another week, another week. Yeah, and this is just so people can hear what NASA itself is saying about this issue. We wouldn't say Starliner is safe to bring a crew home in an emergency if we didn't feel confident in the vehicle's capability. We're taking a little bit of extra time to work through what we've seen and make sure we have all the plans in place to, to bring the crew home in a, in a nominal situation for, for the end of mission. So we're just taking a little more extra time to review all the data and also learn as much as we can while we have this service module in orbit. I mean, are they, are they putting a positive spin on this or is that the reality of the situation? I used to work there, okay. Um, we want a little more time, look yeah. at the data, everything's nominal, don't worry, everything's okay. Look, they're being prudent. And this spacecraft was designed to stay on the space station for like six, eight months. Mm -hmm. So it's not a problem in that sense, but I think they just want to be certain that these little thrusters are going to work reliably so that the spacecraft can come in and land the way it's supposed to. But you can sense a little bit of nervousness on mm. their part. Interesting. And listen to what the astronauts themselves, at least one of them, had suggested about some of the issues ahead of time. That was fine stuff. And we are going to continue continually find stuff. Everything's not going to be absolutely perfect as we fly the spacecraft. We feel very safe and comfortable where, how the spacecraft flies, and we have back-out procedures in case we need those. Everything's not going to be absolutely perfect. This is before they took off. Is that generally the case? I mean, for me as a layman, I was like, well, shouldn't they, shouldn't it be perfect so there's not an issue in space? You know, I know Sonny. I've known her for 20 years, yeah. so I, she's, these folks are kind of adept at dealing with the stuff. Obviously they're super courageous and they're dealing with this, but if it's not perfect, If it's not perfect, out? well, again, I, 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 this is a small issue at the helium leaks. Helium's been poisonous. You use the helium to pressurize the other rockets. It's not something that'll endanger the crew per se. It's just, can you steer this thing? Mm. Can you get it to go from point A to B to Earth? Mm. And I think they just want to be doubly and triply certain that this is going to happen because it's like you got a tire in your car and it's wobbling and you got to drive across town. Like, can I make it? That's sort of the decision. What was in, in, what was the purpose of this mission to begin with? What are they trying to achieve? Uh, the, it was a test flight. The, the mission was two people get in, they go into space, they dock to the station, nothing breaks, they do their thing, they come home. It's a test flight. It's only two people on board. You can have five or six or seven people on this thing during a regular operational mission. And does this portend any issues about going back to the moon? This, no, these, this spacecraft has nothing to do with going back to the moon. That's still... That's again, a different spacecraft. That's, that's, totally a, different that's a total different, interesting mix of can we do it in time sort of things. I see. Okay, all right. Well, we'll see if hopefully they come back safely and not delayed too much longer. And we'll see. Maybe they were, they're just being cautious and prudent. Let's hope that that is absolutely the case. All right, Keith Cowling, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I appreciate talking.